Hello everyone. Today I will teach you about the thin layer chromatography. In short, it is called TLC. So T for thin, L for layer, and C for chromatography. It is a very important technique in the organic lab for purification and before column, you need to know about the thin layer chromatography. If you know very well about thin layer chromatography, then you can decide what type of column and what type of solvent you are going to use for the column. So it is a uh, kind of plate. On top of the plate, it has uh, a layer uh, on silica. Um, so very thin layer. And normally we put the uh, compound on the uh, plate and then we run through the solvent and as the solvent goes up the com depending on the polarity of the compound and the solvent the compound moves a certain distance suppose the compound distance is uh, named as x and <coughs> uh, from the bottom to the tail of uh, to the top of the TLC uh, solvent moves and that is called solvent distance so we named as a y so from these two distance compound distance x and solvent distance y we can get an idea about the retention factor what is retention factor retention factor is a ratio uh, that is <clears throat> in short we say rf or retention factor that is the uh, value of compound distance over the solvent distance so rf equal to x over y <clears throat> so since the compound distance is very small than the uh, solvent distance so the value will be always less than one and since it is the ratio of distance so uh, in that case retention factor doesn't have any unit so it is uh, just a value um, you can get an idea how fast or how slow your compound is moving depending on the retention factor value more the retention factor more it is faster and smaller the retention factor for a compound so it is slow moving so you need to increase more polarity so this is the primary idea of <clears throat> thin layer chromatography and <clears throat> for uh, thin layer chromatography you can choose different solvents so if we think about sil uh, solvent selection for TLC initially people use normally hexane 100% hexane for uh, running <clears throat> any compound in TLC then people can start increasing the polarity of the solvent with hexane so hexane and ethyl acetate this is a very good mm, property <clears throat> very good choice of the solvent mixture so um if hexane is like suppose 99 percent and ethyl acetate one percent and then some people use 98 versus 2 93 versus uh, sorry 97 versus 3 94 versus 6 for 96 versus 4 so 95 is to 5 96 is to 4 so on <clears throat> depending on the compound polarity you can increase more polar even sometimes uh, ethyl acetate can be go up to like 40 percent or 50 percent or 60 percent so uh, for the compound initial assessment the people normally use all those combinations to see how faster or how slower the compound is moving <clears throat> on other hand some <clears throat> some other solvents also uh, available or like suitable for the TLC so another mixture is uh, dichloromethane DCM in short is called DCM and also methanol in short MEOH <clears throat> so you can use 100% DCM and then 
to make more polar in case of highly polar compound if you have any compound having functional group hydroxyl group or amine and h2 group or carboxylic acid group so for those cases you can use methanol with the dcm mixture so 99 is to 1 92 98 is to 2 de depends on and you can go up to 10 percent methanol some people also use more than 10 percent methanol but in that case sometimes some silica can also come out with the compound because more than 10 percent of methanol silica can some part of silica can dissolve in methanol so it is better always stay up to 10 percent of methanol with 90 percent of dcm not more than 10 percent but is in special cases some special cases you can use more than that <clears throat> there are some other solvent mixture also uh, for the tlc purpose uh, in case of more polar compound which is really really stuck in the silica and doesn't want to move in that case you can use dcm methanol with some acetic acid and also another option is dcm and acetone and <clears throat> uh, in case of dcm methanol and acetic acid like if you have carboxylic acid group sometimes some people use some part of acetic acid maybe a couple of drops or even one milliliter in 100 milliliter total solvent and you can also DC, use dcm acetone and acetic acid depends on like how well your compound is behaving there's some also another option that is toluene methanol and acetic acid uh, you can use for the TLC purpose so if you see those uh, solvent mixture are working better for your compound separation then you can choose any solvent so before going to the column uh, for the purification you can use <clears throat> different solvent mixture to see how your compound versus crude or impurity is behaving here I am drawing a TLC plate suppose I run a TLC with a crude compound and if if i see suppose this is my compound spot and top is my impurity spot in that case initially like top in uh, impurity means <clears throat> that moves with uh, like a uh, lower polar solvent and expected compound is very close to the bottom means it is more polar so it will require more polar solvent so what i will do <clears throat> for the column choice I will use like uh, little polar solvent more non-polar solvent first to take out the impurity once all the impurity came out then I will flash out my compound like expected product by using high polar solvent so this is the uh, like theoretical part about the TLC so now I will show you uh, what is real TLC plate and how we are sporting the TLC <clears throat> and uh, uh, compound in the TLC and then how we run it so here is a plate I am showing a TLC plate so it the top white thing is like silica gel and on a glass plate and very thin layer that's why it is called thin layer chromatography or uh, TLC in short so <clears throat> it is not mandatory to that that layer should be only on the glass plate it could be also some other things on uh, like alumina plate or some other plates so here is my crude uh, of the compound like i did a reactions now i will uh, i will do a tlc of it but crude compound need to be dissolved in a solvent suitable solvent first um, uh, so I will take a small uh, test tube and a pipette so with the help of pipette I will take a little bit of my crude in that small test tube and then I will dissolve it with a uh, suitable solvent especially many times uh, maximum time you can use 
uh, dichloromethane or DCM to dissolve it. It doesn't matter like what is the solvent you will run for the TLC itself, but for dissolving, you can use DCM or dichloromethane in the test tube. Very small amount. See, I what how much amount I am taking from my original crude amount. So uh, with a pipette, and now I'm gonna uh, add some DCM or dichloromethane to dissolve it. <clears throat> so it is just for initial check how the crude is behaving and how many impurities available and uh, uh, what is the retention factor of my compound so here i am dissolving with the dcm now uh, i have taken a tlc plate here so i will make a mark with the pencil so remember that do not use pen to mark it because pen has a ink that is organic compound that can dissolve in the organic solvent in the TLC chamber so never ever use any pen so use a pencil pencil is not dissolving in the organic solvent so uh, make a small like slight line do not um, give a press or hard press on the plate in that case it can be destroyed so just a um, light mark on that <clears throat> And the distance should be one centimeter from the bottom to line it should be one centimeter i can show you the, with the ruler here so in that case you can get an idea uh what could be the distance so see that uh, around one centimeter so one centimeter is enough and normally for the tlc chamber i will use like 100 milliliter uh, uh beaker and and from the crude i will just make a spot here and spotting is just light touching and taking up quickly and normally for checking uh use two spot one is like concentrated spot like couple of times touching and another is one touching that is diluted spot and you can put a mark also like where you spotted your compound once that uh, that is done then i'll measure 10 milliliter of the solvent so <clears throat> for this compound i will use first uh, dcm i know the compound is very polar so i will use the dcm not 100 percent dcm i will use uh, with four percent acetone like 96 percent dcm and four percent acetone mixture uh, ultimately total volume will be 10 milliliter then just take a 100 milliliter beaker and pour that solvent and now your tlc is ready now i'm uh, i'll touch the tlc with the tweezer do not touch the tlc plate with the hand so you have to take the tlc plate with the tweezer uh, touching on the top of that and then just insert your TLC plate in a beaker and then uh, put your TLC plate make sure that it is not straight um, or vertical a little bit inclined with the wall so that the solvent can climb up quickly and then cover the beaker with a watch glass and wait until the solvent goes to the top of the TLC plate not completely top when you see little bit TLC plate is uh, not soaked yet then you can take out your TLC plate so here I'm waiting for the TLC uh, plate to be moved by the solvent the solvent is called mobile phase and in the TLC plate the silica layer is called stationary phase so on the stationary phase i spotted my compound now mobile phase is moving that's why it is called mobile phase so mobile phase is running up and once it reaches and when you see it has a around half centimeter remaining then you can take out the plate from the tlc chamber uh, with the help of 
uh, tweezer <clears throat> so I was waiting for that now it is almost close see the distance the solvent uh, moved so I am just taking out and make it horizontal and with the air or like put on a paper towel now I'm gonna check that TLC with a UV lamp so UV lamp is it has a certain wavelength so you can check the TLC under UV lamp once you turn on the UV then you will see you can see some spot see the bottom spot has a like there is a bottom spot of the compound and on the top there is something those are actually impurity so now I get an idea that if I use 4% acetone, acetone in DCM so uh, in the column if I use like 2% acetone in the DCM then top impurity will come first and my compound will be on the bottom so once all the top impurity will be gone then I can flush out my compound from that column so by doing